Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on everybody? This is Joseph Conlon coming to you with your Monday Night Raw review on Monday, November 2nd, 2020. Tonight's episode of Monday Night Raw, I'm telling you guys right now, was terrible. This was a terrible episode of Raw tonight. It's just a boring three hours. Like, in the second hour, like, I started to watch some of the football game between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the New York Giants. That's how bored I was with Monday Night Raw tonight. The show is absolutely terrible, and WWE is doing no favors in making me care about the Survivor Series this year. It's just the same formulaic Raw vs. SmackDown with nothing on the line. And they're making it like a big deal. And it's really not. The only reason it was a big deal last year. Is because we had NXT. And we had great matches mixed in there as well. Like Rey Mysterio, Brock Lesnar, Daniel Bryan and Bray Wyatt. And uh, Pete Dunne and Adam Cole. This year's Survivor Series has nothing special to it at all. I'm not looking forward to it. I'm going to keep this review... Um, Short and simple, so I'm not wasting my time reviewing this uh, crap show tonight. I'm going to save all my energy for Wednesday on uh, the AEW review and the AEW Full Gear predictions with Gamers Goon. And I might just get a guest in for the Dynamite review on Wednesday. I'm going to try. So if actually if any of you are interested in reviewing AEW Dynamite with me on Wednesday... Uh, leave a comment down below, and I'll hit you up on Twitter. But uh, let's get started. Um, uh, we got a same generic, uh, boring promo from Randy Orton. Same promo he's been cutting for two months. Two months he's been cutting the same game promo. And um, he's got interrupted by Alexa Bliss and... She tried to trick the f him for the fiend to come out, and um, uh, what what was it? Uh, Jesus Christ, I don't even remember. Oh, freaking Drew, uh, came out and claimed Randy Orton, and then Miz and Morrison came rushing out. Uh, Miz was about to cash in the money in the bank, and Drew looked like a complete idiot here. Why not just let the Miz? Cash in the Money in the Bank briefcase. And beat Randy Orton. Like. Would you rather defeat. Randy Orton. Who's one of the greatest of all time. For the WWE Championship. Or would you rather beat The Miz. Technically if it was me. I would rather beat The Miz. So I thought Drew McIntyre. Made it look like a complete idiot. In that sequence right there. Then we had Jeff Hardy versus Elias and a guitar on the pole match. It was the first match of the night. Nothing special about this match whatsoever. You had to grab the guitar, smash it over the opponent, which is kind of lame. Like, this ended in pinfall. Like, I thought it was kind of like a no-DQ match. Like, when the first person to hit the guitar over the other wins the match. So, Jeff Hardy won this match... He smacked the guitar over Elias' back. And um, that's that's it. That's it, man. He smacked it over Elias' back. Pinned him. That's it. Hopefully the feud's over. And we can get Jeff Hardy in the mid-card competing for the United States Championship. Wherever Elias goes next, I don't really care. Elias is a terrible wrestler. He's only good at his character. Uh, next, we had Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax versus Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke for the Women's Tag Team Championships. Um, you couldn't pay me to watch this match at all. Uh, making my dessert, walking the dog, going to the bathroom, anything you could have done during this match. I did not give a single shit about this match. So all I know was Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax won. And, of course, it set up a match between Nia Jax 
and Lana later tonight. Then we got Bobby Lashley versus R-Truth. And Lashley beat him in about a minute. Continued to beat him up. Was about to walk away. Drew Gulak came running down with an official. Uh, Bobby Lashley beat him up for a little bit as well. And um, he uh, he attacked Drew Gulak, and he laid Gulak on top of uh, on top of our truth, and he pinned him. So uh, Bobby Lashley gifted Drew Gulak the twenty four seven championship. If it even means anything, they should just goddamn burn the championship as soon as possible. And we get. Um, a promo between AJ Styles and the Survivor Series team. Who AJ Styles is pretending he's the captain. And he gets interrupted. And he, and he welcomes Sheamus and Keith Lee. Which gets interrupted by Braun Strowman. And Braun Strowman's like... Like you guys need a monster on this team or whatever. I've been on three winning Survivor Series teams. Soul Survivor in 2017. Whatever, man. What? What? Whatever. And then um, he said, I, "In my mind, I've already qualified." Then Adam Pierce came out and he said, "We we didn't have a opponent for Braun to go up against since nobody wants to face Braun." And AJ Styles came up with a triple threat between Sheamus, Keith Lee, and Braun Strowman, and if Braun Strowman won. He was going to be on the Men's Survivor Series team. This was so stupid. This was seriously so goddamn stupid. AJ Styles was made to look like an idiot here. Keith Lee and Sheamus were made to look like idiots. Like, they already qualified for the team. Why would they risk... Why would you risk both Sheamus and Keith Lee taking a clean pinfall loss... For absolutely no reason. To Braun Strowman of all people. Why the hell would you do that? That was so dumb. And then you had AJ Styles go out there on his promo. And you made him say. This really means a lot. There's a lot at stake. Did I miss something here? Did I miss a segment where there's something at stake? Because Mr. Styles, I don't know what's on the line at Survivor Series. Oh, I got it. Nothing. Absolutely nothing is on the line at Survivor Series. So, if we get this triple threat match, of course Braun Strowman won. Of course Braun Strowman won this match. He pinned Sheamus with the running power slam. And now he's on the men's Survivor Series team. They did this in the stupidest way possible. I couldn't get my mind around that. And then after that I was just I'm done with this show. I'm done. After seeing that. Oh my god. That was probably the worst thing on the show. That segment right there. And. Not making sense at all with the situation. Then we get Nia Jax versus Lana. Nia Jax beat Lana in five minutes. She walks back. They look at Lana. She's like, they like pick up Lana. You guys know what's next. Lana gets driven through the announcer table for a seventh week in a row. Are we done with this shit or not? This is getting so out of hand. It's not even funny. Like the the script. The script probably gets done. At. At the top of the hour. The script was probably getting done. For the full three hours. When Randy Orton was cutting his promo tonight. I guarantee you. The first thing. That Vince McMahon. And Bruce Pritchard. Put on that script on this show tonight and previous weeks and the weeks to come. The first thing they put on that script is... I'm going to use my notebook here for an example. Alright. Put 
Lana through announcer table. See, that's not the best handwriting, but you guys can see that right, right underneath in my notes. Put Lana through announcer table. Every single week. Every single week. That's the first thing they put on the script. Put Lana through the announcer table. And then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fit I'm just gonna wrap it up with um her business versus uh the new day and the non title match. This was the only good match on this show. This was a good match. Um her business got the victory in thirteen minutes with a Insiguri into a playmaker, uh, or a planer, I think they call it, for Shelton Benjamin, and him and Alexander beat the New Day in a good tag team match. We're probably going to get a tag team title match uh, between these two teams, either next week or on the go-home show before Survivor Series, because, you know, WWE loves to shock the fans, where they always do a title change Right before Survivor Series, they done they did it in 2017 on two instances. I believe they did it in 2018. Did they do it last year? I don't think they did. I don't think I I don't think they did it last year, but they love doing it. So her business is more than likely going to win the tag team titles before Survivor Series, and the match is going to be the her business. Versus uh, the Street Profits. And then we got. Ricochet versus Tucker. Who had a jobber entrance. He's wearing no. Uh, singlet. And he's just wearing tights. He's wearing tights. And he lost to Ricochet. The guy that WWE treats as a jobber. He lost to Rick O'Shea. In 30 seconds. If Tucker's career. Is not dead. I don't know. How his career is dead. Now I'm wondering. When is Tucker's contract. Up with the WWE. Absolutely ridiculous. And then. At the end. Ricochet. Uh, got attacked. By Retribution. And Mustafa Ali. So we go from Retribution. Feuding with the Hurt Business. To. Uh, who was one of the top things on Monday Night Raw. To Ricochet. Who is treated like a mid-card jobber. Who's in catering all the time. So that's a huge downgrade for Retribution. As far as I'm concerned. So they're dead in the water. They've been dead. And they're going to stay dead. And then the main event. Uh, Drew McIntyre versus The Miz and John Morrison. This match went way, way too long. This match went almost 20 minutes. I was bored to death watching this match. The fact that I was watching more of the Tampa Bay Bucks game tonight against the Giants over this match. Drew McIntyre pinned the Miz here with a Claymore kick. And then he got RKO to end the show. So more than likely, whenever it happens, we're getting Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship again. Again. Are they out of their minds? I was fine with the feud. But the feud should have ended at Hell in a Cell. You just... You're just digging it into the ground. You're jamming it down our throats now. It's time to stop. Move on. Move on. Get these two freaking away from each other. After they have this match, because you know it's happening. You know it's happening. Whether it's at on an episode of Raw or at TLC. After this match, I don't want to see TLC. I don't want these I don't want to see these two guys in the same match together for 6 months. That's how tired I am 
of a match between Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre. That's it. That's your Raw review. The show is absolutely horrible tonight. And thank God I'm done reviewing the show. But that's going to wrap it up here on the channel. I want to thank you guys for watching the review tonight. If you have not already, make sure you subscribe to the Big Fight Field channel. Comment down below what you thought of tonight's episode of Raw. Hit that like button if you like what I had to say about tonight's episode of Raw. Follow me on Twitter at Colin underscore Joseph. And there will be no NFL predictions tomorrow. That is going to get pushed back to Friday. So for now, I'm going to give you my Thursday night football prediction between the Green Bay Packers and the San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers lost Jimmy Garoppolo and George Kittle. Garoppolo out for six weeks. Kittle is out for the season with a fractured foot. I had this as a close one, but I cannot see Green Bay uh, losing this one against the 49ers. I got them winning. 35-20 to 20 on Thursday Night Football. So that's going to wrap it up. I'll be back here on the channel Thursday night for your AEW Dynamite review right here on the Big Fight Field channel. So have a good night. Stay safe, guys.